What's up everyone, it's your boy Mikhail Casanova. I'm coming at you with another video. And this is basically my afterthoughts of the Nintendo Switch uh, presentation that just happened a couple hours ago. And um, I'm just gonna give it to you guys 100%. Um, my opinion right now is that Nintendo, I think personally it was a strong, strong um, launch. Well, not launch, but basically their, their reveal, their presentation was actually strong. It could have been better, yes. Um, showing a bunch of random Japanese games that probably won't come to the United States, or it probably will since, you know, the console's not region locked. That, you know, there are some odd points here and there. I mean, the EA part was kind of like weak. It was super weak. I mean, no offense to anyone that likes FIFA, but I'm not a FIFA fan. And when you're living outside the United States, yeah, it's, it's popular. I can understand Japan and, you know, Australia and the rest of the world. Like, FIFA would be an incredibly hot commodity. But one thing I, w I was expecting EA to say something about was Titanfall 2. Because if that dropped on the Switch, I, personally, I mean, that, that that's, a, that's a system seller for me. Um, but aside from that... Um, the things I really liked about the presentation, I mean, the price for one at uh, $299, that's actually a very, very good price. Now, I know a lot of speculation was going between being under $250, over $250, and they actually landed the perfect price. And I can't complain. For what it can do, the portability, I mean, the, two, the battery life, too, is actually pretty decent. Two and a half hours to six hours, depending on the game, which, I, you know, I really don't have any complaints about that. If... You were to break it down, though, say if you're running mods on, like, Skyrim, if they had the mods available, then I can understand you probably won't get up to six hours. You probably get, like, one and a half uh, because it's, if you're running mods, it's going to pull resources, and that can drain the battery. But for Westworth, I mean, if anything, you probably have, like, a juice pack, a multi juice pack or something with you. You can just go ahead and plug that right in and play on the go. Since it does have USB Type-C, which that is super innovative, for Nintendo to go ahead and have that instead of having a proprietary, you know, um, proprietary cable. So I'm actually very happy that Nintendo decided to do that. Other thing, too, um, the Joy-Cons, they're a bit small. Like, I have big hands, okay? And, you know, as you can see, I got the Xbox One, the Gears of War controller, and that fits pretty perfectly in my hand. It's a perfect size. We have the PS4 controller right here, and that fits perfectly in my hand. And some of the concerns I actually have are going to be with how the feel of the Joy-Con will be. Like, we don't really have a, a like a, a definite idea of the size of it. If you're going off of uh, the bulk of the Japanese uh, resident or the people in Japan, they're typically smaller than most of us in the United States. Um, in height sense so generally smaller people you know a lot of especially where i work i work with a lot of uh you know japanese people and they're they tend to be significantly smaller than me i'm six two and a half but six three and a lot of them are about five six five seven or shorter uh five 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 four and they have small hands so like i can understand the joy con like fitting perfectly in their hands you know that makes sense, but if you're looking at, you know, more of a Western audience, you know, Europe, uh, North America, South America, Canada, um, it kind of needs to be, I, I look at this as a way, it's similar to how, like, Microsoft came out with the original Xbox controller, the Duke, and how it was just too massive, and they had to revise it and have um, a more standard size. And I can see that being the same issue with the Nintendo Switch, the Joy-Con controller, just because... It is a bit too small based off what we saw. Now, I, I haven't seen it in person. I would like to see it. I can get a better estimate and understanding once I see it in person. But based off of what I saw, I would say it definitely doesn't look big enough for my hands. And I feel like I would have, I would, my hands will get cramped trying to do this. It's like taking this TV remote and cutting off, like, probably a good portion right here. And all I got is this to work on. I can see my hands getting cramped trying to play that. So, that's one negative. Um, but for what the Joy-Con can do, that was super impressive what they were able to show. 
you know how if you're playing rock paper scissors it can tell if you're throwing rock scissors or paper um, how it can you know emulate the glass or the you know the drink in the glass that was pretty cool um, you know the other part that I really liked too was you know when they showed off Mario now actually I think the first game they showed off was uh, Mario Kart 8 Deluxe which you know I'm getting that game in. I have Mario 8 Mario Kart 8 and I put so many hours in that I probably put at least four or five hundred hours into that game and it is definitely a very fun party game it's it's just one of the best party or just kart based racers that's out there now with Deluxe I mean it's like I'm just gonna drop more money I mean the game looks fantastic you know if they're gonna have more improvements I actually would have preferred if they had made it like um, the uh, Mario Kart 9 but I can understand they want to expand upon something that they currently have because they can always go like down the road I probably think like four or five years from now they can drop Mario Kart 9 probably three more realistically so, I mean, that game looked phenomenal. The other game I'm looking forward to is um, they got the Super Mario Odyssey. That looked fantastic. Like, I mean, seeing Mario rendered in the Unreal 4 engine was fantastic. Being able to see him run around New York or wherever it was, Tokyo, not too sure. Um, and this, the way it looked, you know, his attacks, how he borrowed, like, the roll attack from Mario, from uh, not Mario, but from Sonic. It looked fantastic. You know, I can't knock them for that. Um, Mario games have always been fun, um, and it's nice to see them do something different with it. It looks like it's going to be a cross between uh, Super Mario Galaxy, Super Mario 64, and Super Mario. Um, uh, what was it? The the one on GameCube, Sunshine. And I know a lot of people have given Mario, uh, Nintendo crap for the uh, Super Mario uh, 3D World, or World 3D, you know, the one that came out on the Wii U. And I think that was a great Mario game. It, it changed up the formula, and it made it, you know, multiplayer specific. I mean, if you played 3D Land on the 3DS, it was awesome. It was a really good Mario game. It was a short platformer. And then the one on the Wii U was also fantastic. But I can understand after being spoiled with so many great Mario titles over the years, it didn't live up to the expectation. Whereas this one looks like it will definitely live up to it. And I can't wait to see what Nintendo does with it. So that, you know, Mario was looking pretty crazy. Like, that game was looking on point. And then they brought up, um, I was actually surprised it did so quickly. They brought up uh, Xenoblade Chronicles 2 or Xenoblade 2. That game looked phenomenal. I'm so happy that it looks like it's going to pick up after the first one. As the, I'm not sure who the main character was, but seeing him have like a modified Monado. Like if you guys haven't played Xenoblade Chronicles, I don't know what the hell's wrong with you. That that game was phenomenal. You need to go back and play it. Like I don't, don't, don't even care about the graphics. The story, the amount of time you put into it, the how the, the characters are. Xenoblade Chronicles is a phenomenal game. Xenoblade Chronicles X was kind of like a, a testament of we're going to see what we can actually do with it. You know, it is the biggest open world game that's out there, but it's not exactly the greatest when it comes to story. Gameplay is pretty convulsive, but it plays, you know, it, it's a solid title. It just doesn't live up to um, Xenoblade Chronicles, and they knew that. You know, X was just kind of like a we're going to experiment, and they pretty much were able to do that. So, with Xenoblade Chronicles 2, or Xenoblade 2, uh, if it picks up after Chronicles 1, um, gosh, that sold me right there. When I saw that, I was not expecting that. There's been nothing, there's been absolutely nothing to talk about Xenoblade Chronicles 2 ever happening. There's been nothing leaked, and to see that, to see how far along it is, it looks great. You know, yeah, it doesn't look like a PS4, Xbox One game, but I mean, I don't care about that. I, I like a good game with story, quality gameplay over just visuals. But for me, that sold it right there for me on the console. And then, you know, they talked about, um, what whatchamacallit, uh, Fire Emblem Warriors. And I'm not a fan of the Warrior series. Like, 
the Dynasty Warriors series. I'm just not a fan of it. Uh, it's never appealed to me. And it probably, you know, it probably never will. Um, you know, that just, it, it, that didn't do anything. I mean, they didn't even really show gameplay. They just showed Marth and him picking up the fall. Actually, no, I don't think it was Marth. I think that was, um, uh, I can't even think of his name. He's from um, Fire Emblem Awakening. Because he picked up the Falchion. So I was like, oh, okay. You know. They need to do something else with the IP. They've already crossed it over with Shin Megumi Tensei, so. Uh, that was cool. You know, I'm not going to knock it. Um, fully. It's just, it just does The fact it's a Warriors game. I mean, I have Hyrule Warriors, and that game didn't really appeal to me. I got bored with it. Um. The other games that they showed, like the boxing one or ARM, that looks like they'll be a lot of fun. And that definitely looks like an evolution of um, Punch-Out, which I think they definitely need to bring Punch-Out back with a new modern iteration. And in a way, ARM kind of represents that. So that's super good. I, you know, I was happy to see that. Um, some other things, too. What else did they have? Um, I know there's going to be another Bayonetta. Bayonetta 3 has been confirmed. So it's just a matter of time before um, we see something on that. Um, they showed some random Japanese game, which is kind of, you know, I guess is. It didn't do anything for me. They showed Splatoon 2. Okay, so here's the thing I thought Splatoon that they were showing on the Nintendo Switch, I thought that was actually going to be just like, oh, okay, we're going to update the one that's on the Wii U, since uh, they had a good install base, but it could have been better. I was thinking they were just going to, you know, re, you know, reimagine that and upload it. But no, man, that's Splatoon 2. And all the new gameplay features, I mean, that, I'm not going to be sleeping on that one. I'm, I'm definitely, that's a day one cop, too. Um, the new gameplay enhancements they have, uh, the different ways you can play it. So that's 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 definitely something I'm impressed with. Um, uh, something I don't really see a lot of people that have been covering post <coughs> post Nintendo Switch um, topics is um, talking about the online play because Nintendo is actually gonna they're finally finally stepping up and bringing us an online uh, ecosystem. So kind of like PlayStation has PlayStation Network and Xbox has Xbox Live. Nintendo, uh, they're going to start off as a free service. And I'm not too sure how they're going to do it, but they're, they finally, it took them how many uh, console cycles to realize, okay, we need to get this online thing. And I'm not going to knock Nintendo for that fully because there was a point I didn't really become an, uh, a believer in online gaming probably until the end of the Xbox 360 and PS3, you know, the seven generation consoles. That's when I actually became a believer in online play because, you know, I grew up in the, the early 90s, you know, the late 80s, the early 90s, and, you know, it was all about the arcade scene. So I'm used to just going out and interacting with other people and playing. Like, you're playing Street Fighter, you're playing Final Fighter, you're playing Simpsons, playing X-Men, whatever. You're playing with someone. Um, so the transition, I think it's just my generation transitioning from, um, you know, the arcade scene to the more digital era with it came online gaming. Like, that was a, that was a generational job. And... A transition so um, I'm glad that Nintendo finally decided to hop on the bandwagon when it came to online play and they're gonna have a pricing system a paid service which I have no problem with it I mean as so long as it's good and you can actually chat with you with you with each other that's something you can't really do with the Xbox the uh, not the Xbox with the Nintendo Wii U and the um, the 3ds you can't chat you know it's just the friend code thing or you know, street pass they need to they can keep street pass but just get rid of the friend codes and just make it a lot easier for us to just interact and play with each other so other than that i mean i'm, I'm super excited that they're finally stepping into the four way when it comes to that um 
apparently this is random news, but you know, as you guys know, I'm a big avid Street Fighter fan. But Ultra Street Fighter 2, the final challenger, is actually going to be a Nintendo Switch exclusive title. And I don't. It doesn't do anything for me because the only thing new is they're bringing Evil Ryu, Violent Ken. So if you guys have ever, if you bought the um, Street Fighter 2 or Super Street Fighter 2 Turbo uh, Remix that came out on the PlayStation 3 and the Xbox 360, basically that's all that is. It's, it's just that with uh, two additional characters, and that's, to me, is kind of lame. I'm like, okay. Um, You guys brought Street Fighter 5 I'd be a little bit more excited but no you're bringing Street Fighter 2 which why is anyone going to be playing Ultra Street Fighter 2 when there's Street Fighter 5 season 2 but then again that's Capcom they've been making a significant amount of questionable decisions lately so who fucking knows um, other than that, uh, there was, what else was shown? And yes, I know about Zelda. I'll get to that in a minute. I'm trying to think of something else. There was that, uh, one game. What, what was that? Let me double check what this game was. It was kind of weird. It, it didn't really do much for me. Um, oh wait, there it goes. Um, yeah, I can't think of the name of it. But, oh yeah, I meant to, to say this. The uh, Nintendo Switch does come in two different variations. There's the Neon, the Nintendo Switch, the default one, which is gray and black. And there's also the Nintendo Switch uh, Neon that has the Neon Blue and Neon Red Joy-Con controllers. Which, uh, me, I'm going to get both consoles. Because one for myself, and which would probably be, be the Santa Gray one. And the the uh, neon one would be for my wife since she likes those colors. Uh, the last thing I can think of I'm gonna talk about before I end this video. <clears throat> Yo, did you see the Legend of Zelda: Breath of the Wild? That shit was crazy. Damn, that game looked good. It looked like they actually put some thought into a story. Like the, oh my god, it was looking wild. Zelda talks. There's actual voice acting in a Zelda game. My those Phillips CDI. We're not going to talk about the Phillips CDI. So. But an official Zelda game with voice acting. The cinematic cutscenes look... It, yo, I was emotionally gripped. Like, for real. I was gripped. I was like, yo, shit's about to go down. And it's a launch title? Oh, get it. You need to get it. Um, I I am I'm definitely gonna be picking that up. So, anyway, guys, for me, it's uh, definitely worth it. I think the Nintendo Switch presentation was really good. Uh, I have nothing bad to say. Uh, about Nintendo. I mean, there were some weak areas. They could have talked about uh, the. I mean, the whole point with EA coming out and then Activision. Like, I was like, man, I don't want to hear anything about Call of Duty. I don't want to hear anything about FIFA. I wanted Titanfall. I didn't get Titanfall. Disappointing that. I wanted to hear something about Tekken Seven because I mean, there is that hoary fight. You know, fight stick. You hear anything about that? And I was thinking Arc System Works was going to talk about Guilty Gear because I have a feeling Guilty Gear is going to be on there. But anyway, they didn't. Um, regardless, um, it looks crazy. I'm excited. Uh, my, my brother and I, we're going to get up tomorrow morning first thing because I actually right now in Hawaii, it's like 9.51 p.m. So by the time the, the live stream ended for the presentation out here in Hawaii you couldn't pre-order it anyway because stores closed so 
first thing in the morning, we're going to get up and go and pre-order. I'm going to get two if I can get two. Um, but yeah, um, let's go ahead and end this video. I want to thank you guys for watching. Um, if you guys liked it, go ahead and post your comments below and tell me what you think. You know, like, share, comment, subscribe. And another thing, I want to give a big shout out to a couple of the YouTubers. Um, big shout out to Alpha Rakama. If you guys didn't check it, we actually did a uh, post Nintendo Switch presentation live stream. I'll post a link to that in the description below. I also want to give a big shout out to RGT85. You know, in his video, Why I Pre ordered Nintendo Switch. And he's just a phenomenal YouTuber. I also want to give a big shout out to um, OJ from um, Player Essence. So if you guys haven't had a chance to check him out, you definitely need to. He's one of the most informative guys on YouTube when it comes to Nintendo gaming and you just name it. He's on it. So, you guys, go check them out. And, uh, yeah, i catch you in the next one. Deuces Wild. This is your boy, Mikhail Casanova. I'm signing out. Have a good one. Number Aloha. Shaka all day.